Hey, I'm Eddie Wu, this is Education Live. We're talking about maths in the everyday world and it's a great delight for me to be here with my friend and fashion expert, Kelly Hush. Kelly, thanks for joining us today. Hi Eddie, how are you? I'm fantastic and just really glad that we get the opportunity to speak with you about how mathematics is part of the work that you do every day. Before we start talking about that, um, where are we right now? We are in Carla Zampatti's design studio and we have the machinists behind us who are actually making a dress which is going into the new collection. So spring, summer 2020. Mm, fantastic. So they'll make the sample and Carla will approve it. But before that, the pattern was being made by Nam in the background, who's the head pattern maker. Um, but Carla will try it on. She <laughs> still loves to try everything on and then she'll approve it. And if she loves it, then it'll go into production and probably eight to 12 weeks, we'll see it in store. Amazing. It's a great journey from idea, inception, uh, all the way to actually being on store floors. Now, um, it's great to understand what's happening here, but I want to know a bit more about you, Kelly. You've been in the industry for long, long. enough now <laughs> that you've got many, many different hats that you've worn in the fashion space. Could you give us a bit of a sense of your trajectory through this world and the different roles you've taken on in there? I started my career in the media. I always wanted to be a journalist, but I worked out pretty quickly that I could combine two passions, which was fashion and journalism. So I entered into fashion journalism and ended up being editor-in-chief of Harper's Bazaar, which was the best job in Australia in, mm. in publishing. And then I left there and launched a retail business, which was exciting. Very different to what I'd done for, for two decades, but learnt a lot. And I've worked with Carla as well on, on her business. So I've been able to use that journalism and that fashion career to, to go into other things, which has been great. It's amazing. Now, Diversity. <laughs> 100%. Now, speaking of like the, the nuts and bolts of fashion, I'm looking at some of the designs over here. And like, I'm trying to understand from a mathematics standpoint, like the geometry here, it's kind of, you know, we've got these flat, fabrics and you know we've got to wrap them around this three-dimensional unusual <laughs> shape a human body and you know it's even hard enough mathematicians talk about trying to take you know the world which is just a simple round sphere and how challenging it is to turn that into a, a flat surface. Can you tell us a bit about trying to do that in reverse with a garment like this? Oh, I can show you, it's probably better. <laughs> well, I think, you know, this is the final garment. So this is a sample that is in the new collection, but basically it starts out like a piece of paper, which mm. is the pattern. Um, and then that's the collar, right? right so, okay. so this is how it fits on. That's how it fits on. So it gives you a sense, you cut the fabric mm -hmm. to that. But I suppose this even looks crazier. Yeah, where is that gonna fit? It's the sleeve. Right, so this is on the shoulder? Yeah. Okay, so that, I see how it fits on. Yeah, and so that, that, but again, because the arm is not flat, mm. it has to wrap around. I see, yeah. yeah. And I think too, it's important to say this is like a size eight. So this is, we sample in a size eight, which is the smallest size, mm -hmm. takes less fabric. But yeah, it's the smallest size we make. So, and then obviously a pattern for a size 12 and a size 14 will be. Totally Scale up from there. Yeah. So there's a lot of thinking about proportions and ratios and measurement in that, yeah. right? Oh, exactly. And that's, you know, quite often fashion studios like this will have a fit model as well. Mm. So everything is, is you know, fitted on the same same body every time. And Carla has done that for a, for a long time. So, you know, the size eight is, is Carla's figure. Yep. So if you look like Carla Zampatti, then you're a perfect size eight. <laughs> <laughs> that would be very handy. So I, I'd love to know, I mean, you mentioned before, um, you know, going into media journalism and the owning a business and what that was like. I imagine there's a lot of mathematics to actually make sure a business is profitable. Can you talk me a bit about the challenges you've met there and how mathematics has helped you? Uh, mathematics, it, like, you know, I, I think I've said this before, I wasn't a great student to, in, at, when I started out at school, but maths is every day in fashion. And you don't realise that when you first start out. You just think it's beautiful clothes and talking to designers. And in my case, I was a journalist, so it was all about the words, but it's not true. I mean, everything that you do in fashion is about mathematics. Um, it can be the store floor. So you need to know how many garments you need to have on that floor, what you're going to sell through, how to be profitable, to the pattern making, because that's all measurement, obviously, and you have mm. to get it precise. If you don't get it precise and then your garment comes in, it may not fit. So then you have a whole collection of garments that don't fit properly. And I know designers that have done that where a whole collection has been terrible because the fit's not right. So everything that you look at, there is some element of mathematics in it. And just coming back to something you said before, you know, when you mentioned like a store floor, sort of something twigging in my brain, just thinking about its area, obviously the bigger your store is, the more you have to pay in, in rent and other costs. And then I'm thinking about you know, your staff, and then I assume a lot of the materials might come from overseas. How do you factor all of that into working out profit and loss and all the rest? You need a very big spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> we talk a lot about, in fashion, about landing costs. So a garment, so something like this, it's like, okay, how much did the fabric cost? Mm -hmm. 
How much do the buttons cost? How much does the lining cost? How much does it cost a warehouse? How much does it cost to get it into store? How much does your staff cost? And you have to put all of that into a budget and then mm. work out, well, what do you have to sell this jacket for mm. so that it's profitable? So it's, yeah, I mean, you might look at this and go, okay, it's a thousand dollar jacket, but why, where does that thousand dollars come from? And mm. if you sell something to just cover your material costs, you're going to go broke. Right. And that's the reality. And that's why opening a store is so difficult because every square metre is worth money and you've got to put that, even with staff, if you have a really big store, mm. you've got to have a lot of staff and that eats into your profit as well. Absolutely, so all they're all part of the overheads that are part of your bottom line. Mm. So I'm really interested, you know, when we think about um, someone, you know, who's, who's at home and they're thinking, I do maths, I answer some questions, mm. I, I try and get the right answer. You were mm. talking about having this enormous spreadsheet and there is no right answer some way mm. that, oh, this is correct. What's, what's the process been like for you as a business owner to try and say, okay, um, I'm trying to solve a problem. I've got you know, this season that's coming up. I want to make sure that I, I make this amount of profit and I stay afloat. How, how do you, what's the thought process behind you know, trying to get you know, a decision about how much stock you're going to have or how many lines you're going to have this season? How does that work in your brain? Oh, it's difficult and I think being conservative. I think you need to be a little bit conservative when you're starting out because obviously you'd like to put everything into the store as well. Like you want everything. You want you know, your customer to be able to buy anything they want. Yeah. But the reality is, again, is you can't do that. So quite often a designer will start out and there'll be 50 designs in the collection. But once you start looking at what really is going to make sense, yeah. you know, profit-wise or what you can sell through or how much the fabric is going to cost, then that kind of makes you decide what goes into that collection, what's going to go into store. Yeah. But there is a lot of back and forth and I think there's a lot of learnings along the way. Yeah. So I think when you do start a business, you have to be very conservative to start yeah. with. And probably and do your research as well. You need to look at what your competitors are doing. Yeah. So if they've got ten pairs of jeans in their collection and fifteen jackets, then you should probably be thinking about fifteen pairs of jeans and ten jackets and yeah. not doing thirty pairs of jeans and two jackets. Because I think you need to have a look at what other businesses are doing to be yeah. successful as well. That's amazing, because you mentioned before we can often have a fairly romantic view of, you know, particularly going into such a, a creative pursuit. Um, but you've really got to be able to marry both of those together. And I guess a lot of successful businesses in fashion mm -hmm. kind of have that as a, you know, they've got someone who can crunch those numbers and understand that, right? Yes. You need a very good financial manager <laughs> when you're a creative person. And if you, you know, there's nothing wrong with being totally creative right and if that's that's your thing but you need to have someone in the business who has a business mind because the reality is is you need to be a good business person to have a successful business person mm. and a lot of fashion businesses run from season to season mm. so you will sell through your collection from spring summer and then that will fund your autumn winter collection so if spring summer doesn't work autumn winter's going right. to be a disaster. Yeah, of course. So I think the really successful businesses like, you know, Sass and Bide and the Zimmerman brands, which are really successful Australian businesses. I mean, Carla Zampatti has a business mind and a creative mind. She's one of those rare, yeah. rare people. What an incredible thing yeah. to have them both in the yeah. same mind. But a lot of businesses have that, that finance brain and that creative brain and it's the, a perfect fit. Mm. Which I think also sort of emphasises that um, that creativity and technical uh, knowledge and expertise mm. really has to have collaboration in it as well, right? That so many of us, it's pretty unusual to be like Carla and have that all in one. So we've got to be able to work together with, with people who have that skill, right? Yeah, and you have to be able to listen because if your finance manager is saying, if you make that dress mm. in, in the most expensive silk you can find in Italy and you sell it for two and a half thousand dollars when most of your dresses are only costing five hundred dollars, mm. you, can't, you can't do it. And mm. you're like, well, I want to do it. I'm telling you now, it's not going to sell. Mm. And then you do it, probably won't sell. Mm. And then you've got all those dresses for two and a half thousand dollars. <laughs> what when, are you going to do with them? A bit of a financial disaster, it right? It is, it is. And that's why sometimes you need someone to say, no, the commercial reality of doing that doesn't make sense for the mm. business. You know, it's about survival. Fashion is very much, you know, it's a tough business. So mm. you do have to be financially savvy. Absolutely. And I'm thinking about, you know, everyone back home who is trying to think about how they're doing maths and, you know, it's like, oh, I just want to get the right answer and then move on with it. It's like, I got a tick, that's enough. But actually what you're saying, it seems to me, is you've got to be able to communicate that as well, right? Yeah. Um, now, I just want to come back to, you said, you know, media journalism is what you wanted to launch into. What's it like running a magazine, being the editor-in-chief for something like Harper's Bazaar, which, like you said, amazing job. Mm. What kind of skills did you use in that role? 
I needed to be a business manager. <laughs> it's a creative job, but you also need to be financially savvy. I mean, people look at a magazine and they think, oh, beautiful pictures, lots of photography, amazing models, great journalism. But the reality is, is that I have a budget for every single magazine. You know, for a big issue, it may have been $60,000. For a smaller issue, it may have been $25,000. And within that, I have 100 pages or I have 200 pages. So there is a dollar value put against everything. Mm. So we have these amazing meetings where we have these crazy creative ideas and then it goes into the budgeting stage it's like okay well we can't really shoot that in the Bahamas because basically the flights there for the crews mm. crew are going to kill our entire budget mm. so it is that we have that you know you have that beautiful ability to come up with crazy ideas and and then it sometimes most of the time gets narrowed down because of budget restraints mm. no it's amazing I mean I think about yeah, you know, opening up a beautiful spread and thinking, you know, every single page, um, the numbers have been crunched in the background to make sure that every single one plays its role. I'm sure whoever was designing that particular spread would have loved for twice as many pages, but there's a reality there when you think about marketing, advertising, and all the rest. Yeah. yeah, but you know, I used to be a little bit cheeky, so I'd spend a lot of money <laughs> one month knowing I could save it later along, so then my finance finance manager would be like, Kay. What have you done, I'd be Kelly? like, don't worry, I'll save it in the back end of the year. <laughs> I've got a plan. Yeah, I've got a plan. That December issue, there's going to be no money. I'll just be really creative. <laughs> I might be on the cover. <laughs> so, yeah, that's it. Well, I suppose when you, when you have a face like yours, Kelly, I guess not everyone has the privilege of being able no, to do that. I wouldn't do that to my team. <laughs> now, Kelly, thinking about everyone who's viewing and who, you know, perhaps would love a, a career in the fashion industry, mm. and you've come through, you know, um, like you said, not enjoying mathematics particularly, mm when you were at school, do you have any advice that you could pass on to everyone who's watching along about what their attitude to mathematics should be if they're heading into something like fashion or other creative industries? Stick with it. I think you also don't have to be in the A, you know, the A class. That's really important. I think you really need to stick with it because I think I was in year 11, I was like, I don't need it. You know, I'm great at English. I'm really good at drama. You know, I was getting A's in everything I did other than maths. And it was like, I'm, I'm going to get rid of that so that my report card looks perfect. But the reality is, is I needed maths. And as soon as I got into the workforce, it was like, I just wish I'd stuck with it and probably took the pressure off myself and dropped down a class where it was a little bit easier mm. for me. And I think that's really important. It's maths is so important. And it didn't matter how many times my English, my, my math teacher, see, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> it's a mental block. My math teacher said to me, just stick with it. You'll need it. Even, mm. you know, a home loan and things like that, you'll need it. And I'm like, oh, I'll be fine. But you do need it. Absolutely. There is maths. Maths in every day and everything that you do, even in a creative space, you need to be good, at least have some knowledge of maths. You don't have to be brilliant, but you need it. That's such an important message that mathematics sounds like it's an essential tool to every day. Um, Kelly, thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure. And um, thanks for everyone tuning in. Have a good one, guys.